Right, 343, three. although it's actually quite easy. I just put this one this because it didn't quite look quadratic -y. So, very quick one. So, 342, this one. Well, it's just a case of sort out of the bottom. Notice there's no derivative on top, so hopefully this will just be some inverse sign straight away. But I'll need to sort this out. What does that look like? Well, I've got negative 4x squared and negative 4x. Right, go through the process to complete the square. So take out the negative 4, factor or not, common factor or not rather, and that'll leave x squared plus x. So I'll be negative 4 times. That would break down to x plus a half squared, but that had, introduces a quarter. So take away the quarter. Negative 4 times negative quarter is 1, so I've got 1 minus 4 times x plus a half squared. Put the 4 inside. If it's 4 outside, it would have to be 2 inside. So it's double the inside, so it's just 2x plus 1 squared. And that's just perfect. Because all you've got here then is of the square root of 1 minus oops, 2x plus 1 squared, which is just straight away inverse sine. Inverse sine of 2x plus 1, derivative of that is 2, so divide by 2. So a half of inverse sine of 2x plus 1 plus c. That one's nice and simple. So for this one, looks very much like an inverse sine, but it's not in the denominator. The thing to do here is, we're going to use the substitution. Because whenever you see this pattern, 1 minus x squared, it should remind you that sine squared plus cos squared makes 1. So that rearranging it, cos squared is 1 minus sine squared. So if that had been 1 minus sine squared, it would change to a cos squared, and the square root would just be a cos, and then you could do something with that. So that's the first stage here. Let x equal the sine of something, some other variable, call it theta. So dx by d theta would be cos theta. Well, it's always handy going for sine because it gives you these positive derivatives. So that dx would be cos theta d theta. And if there were any limits to the integral at this point, you could change them as well, and then it would just carry on numerically to the end. However, here I'm wanting to go back and you do a substitution back again to get the actual form of it. So carrying that out, what have you got? You've got the square root of 1 minus x's sine, so that's 1 minus sine squared theta, times cos theta d theta. Now, 1 minus sine squared is cos squared, square root of cos squared is cos, so that's cos theta times cos theta d theta. I know I could have done that in one go as well. So cos squared theta d theta. Now that's not the square of linear function, so this needs changing. But whenever you've got even powers of cosines, you can just use the double angle formula. Cos 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Or rearranging it to read cos squared theta, that'll be 1 plus it. 1 plus cos 2 theta, which is fine. And then divide by the 2, so a half of all of that. And if it was cos to the power 4 theta, then I would just have the square of this. So to have the square of this part, that would still involve the square of cos 2 theta. But then you just do this again, and that would end up with cos 4 thetas, and it would be all going to work out fine. And it's as far as I need to go. So I've got a half of 1 plus cos 2 theta. I can do that. So that's a half of, that goes back up to theta, that goes back to sine. Derivative of the inner function 2, divide by 2, a half sine plus c. Then the next part, so I've got half of that. Now, the sine, sine 2 theta is no use. So I'll split that into 2 sine theta cos theta. Now that was a half of 2 sine theta cos theta. So that part will just come to sine theta cos theta. Now bringing that half in will give me a half of it, plus c. Then put it all back, theta. Well, x was sine theta, so the inverse theta is inverse sine of x. Half of inverse sine of x plus a half of. Now sine theta was just x. And cos theta 
well cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared so cos will be the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta sine theta was x so sine squared theta will be x squared plus c and that's the final answer although usually you see that written with that square root first because that's the way it appears there so if you wish you could see you've got a half of x square root of 1 minus x squared plus a half inverse sine of x and then plus the c if you want it right, number three four five from these this time you've got what looks like an inverse sine underneath but unfortunately there isn't an exact derivative on top so this is also going to require a substitution so let me quick go this one substituting 1 minus x squared use a sine substitution because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 so cos squared will be 1 minus sine squared so let x equal sine theta so that dx by d theta is going to be cos theta or dx will be cos theta d theta sometimes you just write that down straight away I'm not using limits here so what does this lot come to? well x is sine theta so I've got sine squared theta on top dx is going to be that times cos theta d theta and underneath I'll be 1 minus x is going to be sine theta oops, it's already sine squared theta well, 1 minus sine squared that's cos squared, square root that's cos I know I could say just cancel out now but I'll just write it down again so cos theta times cos theta d theta now they can cancel so I'm left with the integral of sine squared theta d theta exact same with this when you've got even powers you can use the double angle because you've got cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta rearranging that sine squared theta is going to be 1 minus this time cos 2 theta and then divide by the 2 a half of it same pattern say when it's cos squared you get 1 plus when it's sine squared you get 1 minus take the half out of it so it's integral of 1 minus cos 2 theta well that's going to go back up to theta that's going to go back to sine 2 theta divided by the derivative of the inside plus a c so that's going to be a half of theta minus a quarter of whatever this becomes because I've only got it defined in terms of single angles but that's 2 sine theta cos theta plus c so I've got a half of theta theta was it'll have to be inverse sine x that's minus a half sine theta that was just x cos theta, well cos squared was 1 minus it, so the cos will be the square root of 1 minus the x squared plus c. And it's probably neat to that with a minus in the middle. And that's that one done.